Hi, I'm David Zeiger, and you're here with me in Trailers from Hell. Now, before I start, I need to make one very important point. You are not as cool as Melvin Van Peebles. I am really not as cool. Actually, no one on the planet is as cool as Melvin Van Peebles. Okay, now that we've established that fact, here's the story. In the mid-1950s, a young aspiring filmmaker living in San Francisco named Melvin Van Peebles made three short films, both to learn the craft that he and he hoped as a calling card for Hollywood. But when he went to the studios looking for work, the only job he was offered was as an elevator operator. Politely turning that down, he was told that, well, if he knew how to tap dance, he could get a job as a dancer. He got the hint and left the country to study and earn a Ph.D. in his other love, astronomy, in Holland. He had already had a degree in English literature, by the way. But while in Holland, he wisely sent his three short films to the Cinémathèque Française in Paris and was invited to do a screening there. As he described the experience, the audience loved the films, and he praised and kissed him on both cheeks as they left the theater, and there he was, standing on the Champs-Élysées with no money and wet cheeks. But he stayed in Paris, learned French, in which he wrote and published three novels, because, well, that's what Melvin Penn Peebles does. When his third novel, La Permission, was published, he found out that if you're a novelist in France, you can get a director's card. So he set about adapting his own book. He got funded by the French government and made his first film, the story of a three-day pass. In a long career in film, Van Peebles only made two films that he had total creative control over. This one, made in 1967, and 1971's Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song. They are both classics. For a first film, the story of a three-day pass is remarkable, assured, innovative, and lots of fun, together with a gut punch. He knew what he wanted to do, and he did it well. Don't ask me to tell you the plot. It's much better if you experience it cold. I'll just say that it's about what happens when an African-American GI in France, Turner, played by Guyana and actor Harry Bird, gets a three-day pass and goes to Paris. Turner! Pleasant surprise for you. A three day pass. Van Peebles was clearly influenced by the French New Wave and the playful new British films by Tony Richardson and others. But whatever he took from them, he made his own. Throughout the film, he seamlessly takes us in and out of the heads of his star crossed lovers, shifting point of view and letting us into their deepest thoughts and fears. He draws you in with an assured use of all of the tricks of the day jump cuts, freeze frames jarring dissolves, split screens, and shifting POV shots. If you ever wondered where Spike Lee got his innovative dolly techniques, well, here you go. Oh yeah, he also wrote the film's jazz and fuse score. <laughs> the story of a three-day pass was released in France in 1968. African-American film critic in the U.S. Albert Johnson saw it, loved it, and invited Van Peebles and the film to San Francisco International Film Festival, where it received an extended standing ovation. Hollywood had produced Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, a similarly themed film with a much more milquetoast, non-confrontational approach. And the times were clearly demanding the no-holds-barred approach that Van Peebles had to offer. Under the loving supervision of his son, Mario Van Peebles, the story of a three-day pass has now been given a beautiful 4K restoration by Indie Collect, and it's being released by Janus Films. Je veux garder cet instant pour toujours. Don't count your chickens before they're hatched, baby. That's all. You're dismissed. <laughs>